once we've had a bit of frost you can see here the leaves begin to be burnt in a perfect world they would have all been absolutely blackened but we're well into November and it's time that I got these lifted apart from which I want to get the land dug and the first thing is to cut back let me just show you leaving a handle of about six or eight inches there's a good lot of stuff there to go on the compost heap Move the old stake out the way and then a spade under it well well back because we want to get the whole thing up there's the label that reminds me what it is and lift that And now we've got a pretty good tuber. I've got another dahlia here that's been grown in a pot. If we take that up to the yard, we can prepare that for storage. Now the first thing we want to do is to move as much of this soil as we can. You need to be very careful because some of these dahlia tubers are not securely fixed to the stem and if you're not very careful they can break off. So if you just get the worst of the soil off and then they just need to be stacked somewhere really warm where like that and then they'll drain and dry. And I've got another one here in a pot. Let's keep the label. And if we knock this one out, get the canes out. And rub this, this, this compost has been allowed to dry and so it comes off much more easily. And I'll reuse the compost, probably to grow potatoes or dig it in, use it as a surface mulch. And there again, it just needs to be left once it's clean to dry. And it's a similar treatment for begonias. Once they're frosted, or just naturally, as this one is doing, fall off, then you take it out of the pot. Now we have to be very careful because it's very easy to damage the begonia tuber that's in here. And so I'll just rub off a fair bit of the compost. You see, if I'm not careful, I start to uh, damage the skin of the tuber. So I'll just get the worst of it off. Keep a really sharp eye out for vine weevil, because if they get into begonia tubers, they'll eat away through the winter and come the spring, you'll have nothing left. So there we are, we've got to quite a nice begonia tuber. Actually, with some of the modern kinds, I'm thinking of begonia Santa Fe. Then they produce quite big tubers. I mean, this is from a four-year-old plant, that's all, from a tiny, tiny seed. Now, once you've got both the uh, begonias and the dahlia tubers really dry, then the best place to store them is in a paper bag, not polythene because polythene's wet and it sweats and I'll leave that open for a few weeks and check them regularly for rots and they should store pretty well in a frost free place until next spring. If you don't have a frost free place then things like the dahlia tubers in some old compost that is really dry is quite a good insulator and so you just put the tubers in a cardboard box lined with polythene and then use that very dry compost around the tubers to insulate them.